Today's tutorial is on General Sciences Biology Part 5 and we are going to study cell division which is the second part of the cell biology tutorial. I'm Dithrisha from GK today and I'm going to be taking you through this. The first thing we come to is mitosis. Actively dividing cells pass through a series of steps known as the cell cycle. There are two main phases in this cell cycle. The first, there is interphone, that portion of the cell cycle in which the cell simultaneously carries out its work and in preparation for division duplicates its chromosomes. Second, there is the mitotic phase or M phase, that portion of the cell cycle that includes both mitosis and cytokinesis. The cycle begins when cells recently created by the division of parent cells grow, duplicate, organelles and prepare the machinery needed to replicate DNA. This is called the G1 phase and it signifies the first gap between the birth of the new cell and DNA replication. The next stage of the cell cycle is the S phase or synthesis phase. During this stage, each DNA molecule in the nucleus is duplicated. When DNA replication is complete, the cells enter another gap stage called the G2 phase. Cell growth and the duplication of organelles continue as the machinery for cell division is prepared. Together, the two gap phases and the S phase make up interphase, an interval during which cells do not divide. Cells spend most of their time in interphase. The cell then proceeds through a series of events collectively called M phase for mitosis that result in the formation of two daughter cells. In preparation for cell division, the chromosomes must be duplicated and then distributed so that each daughter cell receives an identical copy of the complete genome. During the G1 phase, cells possess the standard deployed number of chromosomes in this example, 4. Each chromosome contains one DNA molecule. During the S phase, each DNA molecule is copied or replicated and the two sister chromatids remain joined. Thus, the number of DNA molecules double to 8 during the S phase, but the number of chromosomes is still 4. During the G2 phase, both the number of chromosomes and the number of DNA molecules remain constant. In M phase mitosis, the nuclear membrane breaks down and chromosomes become separated into two equivalent sets. The chromosomes condense line up in a row and then the sister chromatids separate and move to opposite poles of the cell. After the chromosomes separate, the nuclear membrane reforms around each set of chromosomes and the cell undergoes cytokinesis, the division of cytoplasm. Finally, when cell division is complete, each daughter cell contains a complete set of chromosomes. That is, each daughter cell has four chromosomes and four DNA molecules as did the parent cell. So what did we learn about mitosis till now? Mitosis is in mitosis, the mother cell divides into two daughter cells in which the mother and the daughter cells are identical to each other and the daughter cells are also identical to each other genetically or otherwise. The number of chromosomes in parent and daughter cells remains constant. The parent and daughter cells are similar in all respects. They are genetically identical and the purpose of mitosis is growth by increasing number of cells. In most plants and animals, the regeneration of lost parts and vegetative propagation in some plant species takes place via mitosis. We now come to meiosis. Meiosis is the process in the nucleus that divides the chromosome number in half. For clarity, in this video, the nuclear membrane is not shown. Also, the chromosomes are depicted as condensed, although during interface of the normal cell cycle, they're actually thin and dispersed and not visible under a light microscope. Before a cell enters meiosis, it first replicates its DNA. After DNA replication, the chromosomes are duplicated so that each has two identical sister chromatids connected at a structure called centromere. 
Meiosis consists of two successive cell divisions called meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, each of which is subdivided into four phases. In the first phase of meiosis 1 called prophase 1, the homologous chromosomes or homologs in a diploid cell come together. Each pair consists of one chromosome inherited from the mother colored in red and in one inherited from the father colored blue. When they come together, the chromosomes can cross over each other forming an X-shaped structure. At the crossover site, the homolog chromosomes exchange segments. This exchange results in genetic variability in the daughter cells, the second major phase being metaphase 1. During this phase, the pairs of chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell. During the third phase or anaphase 1, the chromosomes of each pair move to opposite poles of the cell. In telophase 1, the fourth and final phase, the chromosome reaches the poles of the cell. When myosis 1 is complete, the cytoplasm divides to produce two haploid daughter cells, each having just a single set of chromosomes. Why are the cells now haploid? Meiosis 1 moved one set of chromosomes to one cell and the second set to another cell. Therefore, each cell now has only one set of chromosomes. Note that the two daughter cells are genetically different. The second major event of meiosis is meiosis 2 which strongly re resembles mitosis. During prophase 2, duplicated chromosomes consisting of two sister chromatids begin to move to the middle. In metaphase 2, the chromosomes are arranged along the spindle's midplane. The sister chromatids begin to separate in anaphase 2, becoming independent chromosomes that move to opposite poles of the cell. During telophase 2, the chromosomes reach the pole when myosis 2 is complete, the cytoplasm of each cell divides to form two daughter cells. The four cells are haploid, each containing a single set of chromosomes. Note that the four daughter cells are all genetically different from one another. So what did we learn about meiosis till now? Meiosis results in daughter cells which have half the number of chromosomes as the parent. Meiosis is required to create the gametes in animals and spores in other organisms. Meiosis is a prerequisite for sexual reproduction in organisms with eukaryotic cells. The cell division in the reproductive cells takes place via meiosis. In meiosis, the number of chromosomes is reduced by half to that of the parent cell which means meiosis is responsible for maintaining the number of chromosomes constant in all sexually reproducing organisms. We now go to the differences between mitosis and meiosis. So mitosis occurs in somatic cells whereas meiosis occurs in reproductive cells. The daughter cells in mitosis contain the same number of chromosomes or diploids as that of parent cells. In meiosis, they contain half the number of chromosomes or haploids. Two daughter cells are formed in mitosis whereas four daughter cells are formed in meiosis. Only one division occurs in mitosis whereas two divisions occur in meiosis. Now we go to different concepts of cell biology. The first we have is how are cells becoming cancerous? So, cancer is caused by the unrestrained growth of cells. Cells that do not follow the rules of normal cell cycling may eventually become cancerous. This means that the cells reproduce more often than normal, which leads to creating tumors. Usually, this happens over an extended period of time and begins with changes at molecular level. Our body has trillions of cells and all cells replicate in normal fashion. However, some agents may change the way genes carry the information regarding the cell division and thus cells become cancerous. Such genes are called oncogenes and such agents are called carcinogens. So in normal cells, there, have, uh, there are 
types of genes that are important in determining whether or not cancer tissue can form. These genes control the production of proteins that affect the cell cycle. Proto-oncogenes are DNA sequences that promote normal cell division. By mutation, these genes may be converted into oncogenes, which promote the overproduction of cells. Another class of genes, known as tumor suppressor genes, prevent excess reproduction of cells. However, mutation in these genes can also cause cells to become cancerous. Now, what is programmed cell death or apoptosis? So, apoptosis or programmed cell death is a process by which cells deliberately destroy themselves. The process follows a sequence of events controlled by nuclear genes. In this process, the chromosomal DNA breaks into fragments and this is followed by breakdown of the nucleus. The cell then shrinks and breaks up into vesicles that are phagocytosed by macrophages and neighboring cells. What is the significance of apoptosis? So apoptosis plays an important role in maintaining the life and health of an organism. During hum human embryonic development, apoptosis removes the webbing between the fingers and toes. It is also vital to the development and organization of both the immune and nervous system. Next we come to how carbon monoxide kills people using heating appliances or using forcing foils. So, because of its molecular similarity to oxygen, hemoglobin can bind to carbon monoxide instead of oxygen. And this subsequently disrupts hemoglobin's efficiency as an oxygen carrier. Carbon monoxide, in fact, has a much greater affinity, about 300 times more, for hemoglobin than oxygen. When carbon monoxide replaces oxygen, this causes cell respiration to stop, leading to death. The particular danger of carbon monoxide poisoning lies in the fact that a person exposed to high levels of this toxin cannot be saved by being transported to an environment free of the poison and rich with oxygen because carbon monoxide has already bonded with our blood. Since the hemoglobin remains blocked, artificially rep artificial respiration with overpressurized pure oxygen must first be performed to return the hemoglobin to its original function and the body to normal cell re respiration. How does cyanide kill cells? So cyanide acts by inhibiting the enzyme cells needed for oxygen utilization. Without these enzymes, a cell cannot produce ATP, which is the energy that we need to survive, and will die. Very small amounts of cyanide naturally occur in some food and plants. For example, cyanide is present in cigarettes and in smoke produced by burning plastics. Next is, what is the impact of coffee or caffeine on cellular level? So, caffeine affects cells by stimulating lipid metabolism and slowing the use of glycogen as an energy source. As a whole, the body responds to caffeine by extending endurance, allowing us to stay awake for longer periods of time or performing extra activities. Adverse effects of excess caffeine intake includes upset stomach, headaches, irritability and diarrhea.